heel, as a team, we're going to crumble. Inch by inch, play by play, till we're finished. We're in hell right now, gentlemen, believe me. And we can stay here, get the shish kicked out of us, or we can fight our way back, into the light. We can climb out of hell, out of hell, out of hell. One inch at a time. You know, when you get old in life, things get taken from. I mean, that's, that's part of life. But you only learn that when you start losing stuff. You find out life's this game in inches. So is football. Because in either game, life or football, the margin for error is so small. I mean, one half a step too late or too early, and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. On this team, we fight for that inch. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to pieces for that inch. We claw our fingernails for that inch. Because we know when we add up all those inches, that's going to make the fucking difference between winning and losing. It's the guy who's willing to die who's going to win that itch. And I know if I'm going to have any life anymore, it's because I'm still willing to fight and die for that itch. Because that's what living is. There's six inches in front of your face. Now, I can't make you do it. you got to look at the guy next to you. Look into his eyes. Now, I think you're going to see a guy You're going to see a guy who will sacrifice himself for this team because he knows when it comes down to it, you're going to do the same for him. That's the team, gentlemen. And either we heal now as a team or we will die as individuals. Ideas are bulletproof. Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. It is November 25th, 2011. Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. <laughs> exactly, Bob. When all the morons come out and go to the mall for those, those savings of 50% off of useless shit that you just don't need. Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. I'm hanging out with my buddy Bob Tuscan. He's live here in the FederalJack.com studios. Bob, say hello. Hi, I'm live here at the Federal Jack studios. And let me tell you, folks, uh, your wildest imagination couldn't touch the experience of being here in the flesh, in the very... uh, He's laughing right now, making fun of me off air here. No, it's good to be here, Popeye. Hi, nice to see you. It's good to have you back, Bob. As listeners know, Bob's been down into the uh, Federal Jack bunker before, and he uh, likes to do live shows from here and cause trouble with me. He's a bad influence when he's here. (laughs) I want to introduce my other friend, Jules. Popeye. Hi. Hi, Bob. Say hello. Everybody knows Jules. She's Jimmy X's co-host over on Radio X, and she's our resident IT guru. How was your Thanksgiving? It was great. We had a good time. I went into a turkey-induced coma for a couple hours after dinner, but it was uh, it was nice. And yours? Did you have a nice one? Wait a second. Is is this Jules from Radio X? (laughs) Yes, it is. I am a huge fan, Jules. I just wanted to tell you, I'm I'm honored to be on a show with you. Oh well, thank you, Bob. I am honored also that you're on a show with yourself. No, that I'm on the show with you guys. Nah. On Black right, Friday. Well, on Black Friday, yeah, that's right. All right, well, I'll, I'll stop joking around here. It's hard to do because I, I like to look over and see Popeye's reaction. 
it's a lot more fun when you actually can look at the person and see what kind of reaction you're getting from them. You know, sometimes you're on the radio, you're by yourself, and you don't know if people are looking at you like, what the hell are you thinking? But when you're in a studio with somebody else, you can actually get a gauge of their body language, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm pretty jealous. It's warm you down should, there. I was going to say, you should come down here. I was going to make you uh, get Florida envy for a moment. But as you know, this is the sixth borough of, of New York City down here. All the New Yorkers want to come down here, and uh, including the, the folks like Popeye from New Jersey. All, all the people from up there love to come down here and mix with the, the ocean and the sunlight. And I tell you what, uh, that's not a good thing. And here's why, okay? Because they leave the Northeast. They've spent their whole lives there. And they come down here to Florida, and they think that it's going to be um, a, you know, a, so, there's something about it that's going to be uh, magical and that it's going to change their lives. And it's the old grass. The grass is always greener on the other side thing because they come down here, and they're just as miserable as they've ever been. They're, there's no change. They don't go out in the sun because they're used to staying indoors all the time, so they don't get enough vitamin D. So they're miserable, just like Popeye. It's always miserable down here. Miserable. No, I'm joking. Are you miserable, Popeye? No, I like it down here, but I do have miserable neighbors. That's why I'm moving out of the <laughs> current federaljack.com studios, because I hate my landlord and I hate my neighbors. Literally. They have little demon spawn children that run around breaking the car windows in the in the complex. It's... Oh, man, makes you want to harken back to the old days where you could whoop a child's ass for doing things, even if it wasn't yours. Seriously, these little, these little demon spawn run around here. They've probably broken like 15, 20 car windows in the past three months. And uh, the, the people that run the place, they're, you know, they're useless. They have a security guard. And Dudley Do-Right gets off at midnight, so, yeah. Well, I don't think people should be beating uh, other children. I don't. I don't know if I. I agree with that. Now, I don't. I don't agree with how, you know, how soft we are uh, with children in general. But I don't. I don't think, you know, getting physical with a child is a good thing. I don't know. I don't have kids, so I don't know. And I know I think- a lot of people swear by it, but I. I just. I don't. I could never see how that's a good thing. Parents need to just take control of their children. That's the problem. You know, they don't, they don't teach them discipline. Uh, There's they no let control, them sit Jules. in front None. of the television half the day. I have to tell you, television definitely has an influence on a child's behavior. If we do not put on the television, I have an angelic child who spends her whole day keeping herself occupied doing creative things and learning and whatever. If we put the TV on, even if it's just for one show, there's a definite change in behavior where she doesn't want to listen. Um, She gets very whiny and cranky. Um, She talks back. I mean, that is not my child. So I think that parents who use the television to babysit their children instead of disciplining their children and teaching their children are what causes the problem, in all honesty. Having one I, now myself. I, I just mean, get rid know. of the TV then, Jules. I mean, what motivation do you have for it? Oh, I mean, I don't watch it. I spend a lot of time in front of the computer, but, you know, there are occasions when I like to catch a movie, the rare occasion. Yeah. So I guess it's good for that. It's just a screen. I guess you could use a big monitor of any sort just to watch movies. You but know, back to... to uh, cable. That's true. Back to Popeye's thing, though, about the kids. I mean, kids mm-hmm. breaking car windows... There should be discipline. I mean, are the kids spoiled? I would imagine. Yeah, but you can't just walk up to somebody's kid and no, start no, no, no. But the, it's a parents' knees. responsibility. Yeah, and I the agree parents with you. back in the old days when you did something wrong, and especially if your mom went over to your friend's house to say you did something wrong, you got punished. These kids okay, aren't disciplined a, punish, or a punishment and physically hitting a child uh, don't have to be the same thing. 
No, no. You go to your room without dinner or, you know, you can't play with your toy or whatever. Did You're you not see going that friends. judge, Jules? Did you see that judge that was hitting his handicapped daughter, beating her? Yes. And, I got, and she was filming it? Yeah, and he was suspended, I believe. Or was I mean, he not? I don't remember. Suspended? He is the scum of the earth, okay? I'm sorry, but that video really pissed me off, okay? Scum of the freaking earth right there, I tell you. There's a few of them down here, Bob. Don't forget the guys that got paid five grand per kid to send them to boot camp down here. And those sheriff's boot camps are all over down here, all over the south, but there's a lot of them in Florida. It's disgusting. Trafficking in children, totally disgusting. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to break. We'll be right back. More Jules, Bob Tuscan, and myself. Stand by. All right, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of times, most of the time, 99.9% of the time, my show is deadly serious. But, and this is a serious thing I'm going to play, this clip, but this is something that I guess you could say would be in the off-the-wall news category, maybe better suited for our Monday program, WTF, but I have to play this because I found this clip uh, on CNN, and this just... Uh, all I'll say is, guys, maybe we should watch out to not piss off our wives after listening to this clip. Big story out of Pakistan about a very gruesome murder of a man allegedly by his wife. Our Reza Saya joins us now from Islamabad. So, Reza, this seems like something out of a horror movie, but it's very real. A woman trying to cook her husband's body parts. Terrorist. Yeah. Well, oftentimes we use the word shocking in TV news and it's overused, but I think that this time it fits the bill. It doesn't get any more grisly than this. According to Pakistani police, 32-year-old Zaina Bibi from Karachi, Pakistan, drugged her husband, then hanged him, then proceeded with the help of her 22-year-old nephew to cut up his body into 51 separate pieces. But it doesn't end there. According to police, then she proceeded to cook her husband's body parts. Police say she didn't want to consume her husband's body parts. She wanted to get rid of the body parts without being caught. She thought this was the way to do it. It didn't work. According to police, neighbors smelled a putrid foul order. Uh, they, they called police. Police arrived at her home. We spoke to an investigator who was on the scene. He said he walked in and saw Zaina Bibi with the whole bunch of pots and pans on her stove uh, cooking up her husband's body parts. Needless to say, Frederica, they took her away to jail. They took her uh, nephew away as well. She's awaiting uh, murder charges along with uh, some other charges as well. And why, Reza, is she believed to have done this? <laughs> yeah, a Pakistani television station actually did a jailhouse interview with her, and she... Hey, that woman is so calm. She's like, and... And why did she kill her husband and cut him up into 50, you know, some odd pieces and cook him? Did you see how calm she was? Well, she, she knows they're terrorists. Al-Qaeda. That's what it is. <laughs> Al-Qaeda. All right, I'm going to play the last 20 seconds. He told this television station that this was her second husband. She had a daughter from her first marriage, and apparently the husband wanted to divorce her and marry this teenage daughter. Obviously, she was uh, incensed. Uh, in that television interview, she wasn't remorseful. She wasn't sorry. She said, I did the right thing. He deserved it. Uh, she's well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Guys, lesson to be learned. Don't try to divorce your second wife and hook up with her teenage daughter while in Pakistan, and you won't be turned into husband stew. That's disgusting. I, I just, I'm, if anybody's vomiting, you know, I apologize for the, uh, the sick stomach, but that just blew me away. I could not believe, I mean, that makes Dahmer look, well, he was, he had ear pizza. You know, did you ever hear that, Bob? that when they went into Dahmer's place, they had a pizza and they opened the refrigerator and there were human ears on it. Like you would see um, pepperonis. Completely disgusting. Jules, did you ever hear about that? I haven't. And it is really disgusting. I was just envisioning uh, it. Dom, Dahmer also had a big vat of acid too. 
that he could uh, dispose of the body parts. He was such a quiet person. And before I go off onto other news, if you guys want to read more about, and this is not, you know, the end-all, be-all. I suggest there's, there's two books I'm going to tell you to get. But if you want to read more about serial killers and stuff like that, since I never really touch on it, there's two books. One's called Whoever Fights Monsters by Robert K. Ressler. And uh, it's only like six or seven bucks. You can get it. It's a little paperback. Whoever Fights Monsters. And the other book you want to get is, where is it? Lust Mord. I'll repeat the name of the book. It's called Lust Mord, The Writings and Artifacts of Murderers. L-U-S-T-M-O-R-D. Lust Mord. And the first book was Whoever Fights Monsters by Robert K. Ressler. The Lust Mord one is going to gross you out when you watch it. It's going to freak you out, just so you know. You're going you're gonna to read the, the, the true writings and stuff of serial killers. You're going to read about little girls from the early 1900s, even in the 1800s, little kids, five, six years old, that were serial killers that killed other little kids. It's real creepy, creepy stuff. But if you ever want to look into it, two good books to read. Check them out. All right, getting into other things. Let's touch on the obvious. Jules, it's Black Friday. Have you seen The Craziness with Black Friday? I have. I've watched quite a few videos, seen some pepper sprayings. Um, but I am glad to say I did not venture out myself. You didn't go to the mall? You didn't brave Black Friday to save 50% on useless crap? I did not, no. No, this Christmas I think will be a bit of a bah humbug. I'm not feeling very festive. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I think we need to send a message. You know, I would support small businesses before I supported any of the large uh, corporations, that's for certain. So what are you going to do, like give away homemade gifts and stuff? Maybe, or, you know, go go to some of the little small places in town and, um, I don't know, come up with some nice things, you know, places to go, things to do, spend some more time. And why do we need all of this useless crap, right? Stuff is stuff. And when the, you know, when the, the you know, what hits the fan, you're not going to be able to take it with you, <laughs> you know. So <clears throat> maybe buy your friends and family uh, gift certificates to survival places. You know, that might be a nice gift. Force them to get prepared. That's a good idea. I did That's actually a really good one. idea. Go to like a survival website or something and get them a, a gift card so they have to go use it there on something. I mean, right. either that or if they don't want it, you just take the gift card and use it on yourself. <laughs> win, there win. You go. There you go. What do you think of this whole, uh, what do you think of that, that clip that I played earlier, the husband uh, being chopped up and eaten? You're, you're, well, you're it was married. disgusting. Yeah, that was absolutely disgusting. I mean, I, I can see how she was upset about the situation. Um, you never find out what the teenage daughter thought about it. Um, but the fact that her nephew helped her, I think, is the most disturbing. You know, she might well, have been in kind of a psychotic state of mind. But the I nephew- wonder if it was her sister or if it was his, like, was it his brother's son or was it? Her, her, maybe her brother's son or her sister's son, you know? Yeah, like I don't you know. It's amazing. Usually the most brutal, horrific murders and stuff like that uh, usually are, are perpetrated by people that the, the person that was killed knows. Right. So that doesn't surprise hey. me. I just thought it was a, an interesting little tidbit. I was like, oh. She, well, I thought speaking- at first she was going to eat him, but go on. No, I was going to say, speaking of serial killers, uh, something that I wanted to get both of your takes on is what is going on in Somalia and what is the end game? Like, why are we going in there and why now is Israel uh, doing drone flights and bombing Somalia? I'm really perplexed over that. 
I'll answer that on the other side of the break. It's all, well, it could be summed up really, actually, real quick. Um, they're trying to take over Africa. It's as simple as that. AFRICOM, Libya. Besides, drones are much easier to use. We're going to break, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. Before we went to break, Jules had asked a really good question. What's up with all this crap going on in Africa? And, uh, I mean, you could sum it up. I guess you could say you could sum it up easily by saying they're, they're taking over Africa. That's what it's about. I mean, Somalia, Kenya... They're, they're looking for excuses to put special forces units or drone units and stuff in certain areas in Africa. And then you only have to take over certain parts and then you you pretty much own the country militarily because you, you block off certain key routes and, and supply lines and stuff. It's almost like the invasion of Africa without Africa even knowing about it, like the very slow invasion. And they do it under NATO and everything else. It's It's disgusting. Bob, what do you think? Well, I'm a big fan of Ethiopia and all the Rastafarians. And I think we need to protect the Ethiopian Rastafarians. I think that they are our only hope in this fight against the New World Order. Uh, we all come from Ethiopia. We can uh, track back all of our DNA to a single skeleton found in Ethiopia. So... Uh, I think that uh, that's the plan here, that this is a secret plot to invade Ethiopia, that we went into Iraq, we went into Libya, we went into Afghanistan, all with uh, the end game of Ethiopia in mind. So nobody will tell you about this. I'm the only one talking about Ethiopia and how they're coming after the Rastafarians. Okay? And they want to make you think that Ethiopians are all malnourished, but... It, it's <laughs> Popeye is just I can't keep a straight face. Am, am I crackling? Do you hear that noise? Popeye? Yeah, you were crackling for a minute. Yep. That's the Ethiopians trying to cut you off. That's how they talk. Just like that. <laughs> Bob's such a liar. Wow, your connection's horrible, Bob. <laughs> I guess that we could be considered my fault. I'll have to fix that uh there in the next break when I get a chance. Oh, well, too bad, Bob. So, Jules, what were you saying? You got cut off. I'm sorry. Go ahead, dear. Oh, no, that's okay. One of the things that I was just thinking about was uh, a few months back, there were a few articles about the Chinese moving into Zimbabwe and how they had um, offered large loans to Zimbabwe, which they took, and built them a very large military complex. And now the Chinese are managing that military complex for them. And Zimbabwe is on the hook for large amounts of loans. And also, they had built a bunch of different factories, and they were employing the Zimbabwe population. But it was like slave labor camp. You know, they were making pennies a day. So I wonder if this doesn't have anything to do with China getting a foothold in Africa. So now we have to assert ourselves and take over the rest of it. Just a thought. That's actually a really good thought. I never thought of that. I didn't... I didn't uh actually put that together. Wow, Jules. I didn't until I sit back now. and think about it. That's a good point. Yeah. I mean, it could be. Probably, and, they probably are trying to stop China. A lot of this is economic warfare brought out to the physical realm, into physical war. Mm -hmm. If you look at Darfur, uh, the, the number one recipient of that oil from that pipeline happened to be centered right uh, in the Darfur com uh, conflict, goes to China. So um, there's something to that. Uh, China or Ethiopia, either one. Well, Russia is trying to uh, assert their influences now, too. Didn't they just give all the money to the EU to bail them out? Uh, yeah, but the EU can't bail anybody out. They're, <laughs> they're out of money. The euro is dropping like a rock. But I believe that Russia gave them the money to back it up. Yeah, but then we're effing with Russia mm -hmm. over in Syria and Iran. And Iran. And now uh, Russia is giving Syria um, anti-aircraft weapons to shoot down so, NATO airplanes. That's, that's just great. Here we go, World War yeah. III. Yeah, this is getting very ugly. And Russia and China were not happy about Libya to begin with. Yeah, I, I don't... 
I don't understand like what these people are. Th- I mean, honestly, I know that they're filing a plan and another trying to start World War Three, but it, I if they are, are, let's say they're not. Let's say that their intention isn't to start World War Three. Okay. Let's say they're just screwing around for political purposes. If you didn't want to be at, you know, that they, they were being that nefarious. What the F? Seriously. These people are playing with millions, millions and millions, of, hundreds of millions of people's of lives. You know, the lives of hundreds of millions of people on this planet, I should say. And they're, you know, at the, at the push of a button. And these guys are, you know, playing chess with it like it ain't nothing. And people and think Russia's- it's okay because they're too busy going to Black Friday sales for their stupid iPods. Russia's building all kinds of new weapons, and Putin is ready to be installed in January, I believe. You know, it's it's definitely not a good situation. I thought uh, George uh, George W. George Walker was uh, good friends with uh, Putin. I don't know. Didn't Wouldn't surprise me. Vacation together or something. He used to I call tried not to pay Putin. attention to him. Bush used to call Putin Pooty Poo. I'm not kidding. He had all these little <laughs> stupid nicknames for people. Pooty Poo. I like Pooty Poo. It sounds a little intimate. <laughs> no, Where's my Poo Poo? My goodness. No, Pooty Poot. Poot. Not Poo. Poot. Because Putin. So he called him Pooty Poot. Perhaps I didn't get the poot out properly. Yes, Pooty Poot. I know it still sounds intimate. I know. You really do need to get the poot out properly next time, Popeye. Yeah, because that's that's the problem, Bob. <laughs> the fact that he has a little nickname for him like that. I wonder if that comes from Bohemian Grove. You know? I wonder what other kind of weird twisted nicknames they have for each other. What's your nickname well, it, at Bohemian Grove, Popeye? My nickname at Bohemian Grove is Bob Truskin. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you guys seen the pictures of Putin? His uh, oh, back probably three four months ago, I posted this whole gallery of his you know man shots. He's standing shirtless in a field with a shotgun. Uh, he's in a submarine, you know, he's with his all his gear on. Or he's you know, trying to he, be something like alpha male. You know what's you know what's creepy is if you read Charlotte Isabel's book and you hear her, she talks about how they're gonna Sovietize the U.S. and Americanize Russia. You know, like the Soviet Union at the time back when Gorbachev was in. And look at Russia now. You know, Putin's running around trying to be some macho cowboy, you know, shirtless like you said, doing all this stuff. And look at how we are over here. We're like communist Russia now. KGB, cameras all over the place. It's very creepy that we've flipped. Yeah, and now uh, I saw Obama today speaking out against uh, the military in Israel, or not Israel, in Egypt, sorry, saying, you know, that he needs to let democracy rise over there. I mean, really, are you kidding me? Let it rise. Democracy. Oh, that you know what? When I hear the word democracy, that reminds me of Bob's favorite. This is what democracy line. looks like. Exactly. Ugh, I hate democracy that. now with Amy Goodman. I love democracy now. Favorite show. Ugh. I love that chant. This is what democracy looks like. Every time I hear it, it makes me want to pull out all my hair. And I have a lot of hair, so that must be crazy. I'm telling you, I can't stand that. They're right, though. That's what democracy looks like. A democracy is a mob rule, so a bunch of a mob of idiots running around all chanting the same slogan who actually really have no idea why they're angry. Hmm? That sounds like mob rule to me. At least the definition of it, anyway. The dic- the dictionary definition. Now, uh, what happened to all the occupies? I mean, yeah, did they well, shut them all a lot down of them got broken still- up. Some of them are still in in in, in play. Uh, actually, I, right before we came on air, Occupy LA got noticed that they have to leave. The I think they're I don't know if they're at City Hall. 
or Bank of America building. It might be City Hall, but they got told that they got a Van Moose on Monday. So I guess uh, L.A., who, uh, let's just say their police department isn't known for uh, being uh, sweet and happy and throwing candy out to people, they're going to be probably clearing them out Monday. So maybe we'll see another violent thing. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but who knows? You know how these cops are. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We're going to break. We'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. To all the first-time listeners of my radio program here, Down the Rabbit Hole, sometimes I have hard-hitting guests on. Sometimes I have uh, solution-oriented shows once in a while. I even like to offer solutions. And today, instead of giving you guys a holiday... Uh, rebroadcast, which I, I know a lot of people did. And I'm not picking on them. I appreciate many of them work on other holidays, so they wanted to hang out with their families, but uh, I decided to do a live show, but I didn't want to, you know, get too too, too, you know, evil or heavy tonight. I just wanted to kind of skim over a multitude of topics. It is, after all, a day after a family-oriented holiday, and I would like some people to retain some of the uh, joy that they may have uh, been able to fill themselves with yesterday, or if you maybe didn't get a chance to fill yourself with joy because you have family members that are completely brain dead and you try talking to them and it's like talking to the wall. Anyway, regardless, I'm not going to try to get too heavy and too dark tonight. There's a few different things I uh, I wanted to discuss. The, the, the news lately has been crazy. I know uh, Alex Thomas over at the Intel Hub has a, a new article up about... Uh, they're voting on a bill or something to remove citizens, you know, pretty much without any judge, jury, or anything. Just remove them from their houses and arrest them in the middle of the night, and, like blacklist them. Hey, if they think you're a bad guy, off to, you know, camp you go. Unbelievable. I mean, we're turning into a police state. Bob, what do you think about the ever encroaching police state, you know, and Big Brother? You've been back down here uh, to South Florida, you've been out of here for a while. Did you notice any changes with all the cam? I mean, I know there were cameras the last time, but did you notice that the cameras had babies and now there's more all over the place? How did they do that? It's amazing. How did I? I didn't realize that cameras multiplied like rats. It's quite uh, startling. And yeah, this uh, new uh, bill that they're trying to push. It's uh, what's the name of it here? The Senate. Uh, Indefinite uh, military detention bill. What's the real name? I just made that up. I'm trying to find it. It's the. I'm scrolling through here. Anyways, I'm it's probably six six six. Lose your rights bill. HR six six six. It's uh, HR SR one two five three one two three five three. And uh, we were talking about it a little bit on my show last hour. It's basically, and I'm going to sum it up in a few words here, the Patriot Act on crack. Yeah, this thing's no good. No good. So I say we, we have a, a cocktail here. We have some sopa and a little bit of this, and we stir it, uh, shaken, uh, not stirred, actually, and we put it on the rocks. What do you think? That SOPA bill is horrible, too. You, we already have Protect IP that was passed but shelved. Now you have SOPA, which will literally make it a crime for me to send Bob a link of a video. Hey, Bob, check this video out. Well, that's a crime now because, hey, it... it, it it has three seconds of a copyrighted video, you know, a snippet of a video in there. Fair Use Act? What Fair Use Act? SOPA would literally gut legislation that we already have protecting our First Amendment rights. And you have Hollywood. <laughs> I don't make enough money. <laughs> I can't get along with the new technology out there, so we're just going to rape our customers instead because we're not really about making art like we say we are. We're all about making money, and we're bloodthirsty leeches, and we all suck. 
Hollywood is backing this. People like the Weinstein Company, like Harvey Weinstein, needs any more money? Ugh. Please don't be. Anti- He's from Buffalo. Is he from Buffalo? Yeah, he started in Buffalo and then went to New York. And he's he's clearly Jewish, right? I'm sure he's Jewish, yes. Not that that matters, but you know. It doesn't matter. But I, I think that this uh, SOPA bill matters. I mean, it's going to shut down. It's, it's using Hollywood to make it look like it's them that's forcing this, but really it's a way to shut down people sharing information. Right. Good excuse. Good reason Pretty to much. spend federal dollars, you know. Well, federal Jack, what do you have to say about that? Because they're spending your federal dollars. And they, the, those Federal Reserve notes. I mean, there is a conspiracy here with all, with all the feds. And it, there's no surprise that uh, federal Jack is a, a federal, is a private site, uh, a lot like the F- Federal Reserve is, okay? Federal Jack is about as federal as Federal Express. <laughs> He's such an idiot sometimes. I swear to God. <laughs> I just thought of that. Well, I am about as federal as Federal Express, so I mean, I don't get any federal funding. <laughs> I've been accused of that, though. I've had somebody. I, I get the liberals tell me I'm Republican funded, and I get the the hardcore right wing tell me I'm a liberal because I think 9-11 was an inside job. That's what makes me a liberal. I don't know many liberals that run around actually saying 9-11 was an inside job anymore. Most of them stopped after Obama became president. Well, you know, did you see that article today about uh, losing our souls to Black Friday or something? But that's kind of what it was about. Oh, celebrating spiritual death on Black Friday. That it was 10 years from uh, when um, Bush had come out and said, why don't you just kind of forget about all this stuff and go shopping? And got everyone completely distracted instead of looking at what happened at 9-11 and questioning what had happened. Everyone had been so traumatized that they turned to consumerism to make them feel better. I you didn't see that, that article. But yeah, I, I do remember that, that too. Uh, Get the economy moving again. And go Let's buy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I remember them telling everybody to spend, but I never looked at it like that. I mean, I I understand the whole spiritual death aspect, but now that you bring that up, that's actually a uh, interesting note. I didn't even realize that that was ten years this year. I mean, it's the ten. It was the ten year anniversary, so that makes sense. But uh, that is uh, Jesus. You know. <sighs> What have we come to, ladies and gentlemen? Seriously, sit back and just think about things for a second. Reflect. Take a little time with me. Let's sit back and be mellow for a minute. Take a swig of your your brandy or your coffee or whatever. Well, if you want us to be calm, we might as well light it up. Well, there you go. You could always light it up. And then sit back and let's let's contemplate on things. Okay, shall we? Let, let's look at this. And... Not emotionally, not, don't let your emotions get involved. I know for people that lost loved ones or lost (laughs) friends, exactly. Don't let that bother you. Don't let the emotions get into you and say, you know, don't look at that. I had that. I had survivor's guilt for years. I couldn't even look at pictures of 9-11. It would make me literally feel horrible inside. It was horrible. Bless you, Bob. And, uh. It it literally made me feel like uh, sick to my stomach. I couldn't look at pictures. Once I dealt with my survivor's guilt and I got over it, uh, it was different. I was able to look at it with a fresh pair of eyes, and I, I actually said to myself, I can't believe I didn't see this earlier. But it's amazing what happens when you allow emotion to block you. So let's remove emotion from the se- from the whole you know me- sequence here, the whole equation. And now let's go back and look at it without emotion. Let's start to look at everything. 9-11, JFK, RFK, Oklahoma City. Let's even look at things that we don't, we're not, that, you know, we're not sure. But, I mean, the reaction to it is suspect. Like BP's oil spill or Fukushima. Or even worse, the Natalie Holloway disappearance. 
<laughs> well, you never know. Honestly, she could have gotten free. She probably got sold into the white slave trade. Oh, or, I she's, know, but I, or she's dumped off the, the, the coast of Aruba or something. I know, but I joke because that was such a distraction, just like the whole Casey Anthony thing, all those distractions that take away. Uh, well, from you're that. actually good at picking out these distractions. Bob, what do you think is going to be the next one? Do you think it's going to be a missing kid? What do you think it's going to be? The next, next distraction here uh, is going to be presidential uh, in, in nature. In other words, it's going to have to do with uh, this Republican race, I predict that we'll see at the Republican convention some sort of uh, black bloc provocateurs stirring things up. That's not going to be the sh- distraction per se, but I'll tell you, you know, a recent distraction is this whole Herman Cain thing. I think we'll see more things like that, more, you know, because we love sex scandals, you know, the Wiener thing. We we love those kind of distractions. Yes, we do. We love our distractions. Whether it be the Casey Anthony case, shopping, that seems to be the favorite. And that's interesting that you brought that up, Jules, that people use that to distract themselves. And look how much we've changed in 10 years. Exactly. Look look where our morals are. I think Jules summed that up. I think she summed up society's problems in that entire little article right there. Good shot, Jules. Ladies and gentlemen, hour one is over, but no fear. We'll be back with hour number two in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. I promise we'll be right back. More Joel, more Bob Tusk. Welcome back for hour number two, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a little out of breath. I just ran up five flights of stairs. Whew. I had to let Bob out. <laughs> Whew. Let me tell you something. I haven't had to do that in a while. Whew. Good exercise. All right. Welcome back for hour number two. I'm still out of breath. Jules, you're still with me? I am still with you. That was pretty awesome. That you made it down and back. Yeah, without dying. <laughs> I'm so out of breath. Whew. I had a run, and I can't run. My one leg is shot, so I'm in so much pain right now. But all for you, ladies and gentlemen, all for you. Live radio. Rather than do a rebroad, we, uh, we'd rather cripple ourselves. Jules, what did you just send me? I sent you a document that I found this morning. Um, someone had reposted it from Natural News, but there were some scary things in there. It was about the 10 outlandish things that the scientific controllers have in mind for you in the near future. So I thought it was kind of cool to just see what they're working on. You know, there's so much crazy stuff going on in the shadows between genetic engineering and manipulation of mixing different viruses and trying to make things more dangerous and bioweapons and whatever, you know, and then the remote monitoring of us and trying to track us every way, shape or form and censor what we can do and share, you know, I think it's worthwhile maybe looking at some of the things that they have in store. What do they got? I mean, I already know about the RFID chips and all that, but what does the article say? Well, one of them is like behavioral vaccines that rewire your brain to eliminate, eliminate dissent. I remember reading about this a while ago. Didn't we have a conversation about that? Remember that that uh, it was some sort of FBI training video where they were talking about um, how to give a vaccine, and it could even be aerosol to um, anyone who had the dissenting type of personality. It would make you completely consent to everything that was going on. I mean, they pretty much could take all of us and turn us into believers. You know, give us the proverbial Kool Aid. That was a you know, disobedience is a disease. About the vaccine, like a year ago, right? Right. About six months to a year ago. Yeah, like I don't remember what it was called. Per se. Like, if you don't believe in the uh-huh. government, they could vaccinate you against that almost. Exactly, and they were going to be using it in the deserts. I don't remember if it was Afghanistan or uh, Iraq. Maybe they were talking about using it, but um, 
Yeah, it was to take, you know, radicals, that was how they viewed them, and to turn them into, you know, consenting public. But <clears throat> this article is saying disobedience is a disease and there's a cure for disobedience, right? Oppositional defiance disorder is what they call it. And there's a new vaccine that biologically rewires your brain to make you more socially acceptable to the controllers. To quote They're Michael Badenarik. You bring your vaccine needle and I'll bring my 45 and we'll see which one makes a bigger hole. Yeah, there you go. Yep, it's a chemical lobotomy. That's messed up. I mean, I could you imagine? What if they mixed it in with, you know, regular vaccines and gave it to your kids? Well, California passed that law that they can vaccinate kids without the parents' consent now. Did you see that? I saw that, yeah. That's pretty frightening. And so uh, Australia... The door. I didn't mean to step on you, Jules. No, they, uh, they, they use all Gardasil to open the door, and then now they can do that with anything, right? Now what happens yeah. if they decide they want to forcefully vaccinate people against the swine flu or whatever other, other flu or disease that comes along? Well, you bring up two good points. The first is in Australia. I just saw yesterday that um, they're going to withhold a $2,500 uh, tax break if you don't have your kids vaccinated, number one. And then number two, they announced yesterday also that they have found a brand new, never before seen strain of swine flu. So... Their reasoning behind that is that they have better technology now so we can detect these things, maybe. Or is it, I mean, wasn't there a story like two weeks ago about the scientists that came out and they had mixed like bird flu and swine flu and made them much more dangerous and the scientific community is going, huh, we want to publish our results and the federal government's going, huh, I don't know if we really want you to publish your results because now we've just given everyone a better bioterror weapon. You know, but I mean, this stuff is going on everywhere behind the scenes and there really are no controls on it. You know, just like um, genetic engineering, you know, they're mixing all kinds of human animal hybrids in the back room and there are no international laws that make that illegal. But come on, spider goats are cool. Yes, spider goats are cool. <laughs> but I, like I mean, just imagine what they're... Imagine what they're developing. You know, I'm sure that there's new soldiers. That's scary because, you know, you're screwing with Mother Nature. You don't know what the hell you can do. You know, they don't know um, what the reaction is going to be down the road. You know what I'm saying? They change. They make this organism. We don't know how that's going to affect the entire uh, biosphere or whatever the hell they call it. Well, think about all the nanobots. You know, all this this nanoparticle um, Well, did you ever see that movie Gamer? You ever see the movie? No. All right, it's got uh, Gerard Butler, the guy that was in 300, and the dude from uh, Dexter, the guy that plays Dexter. Oh, yeah, he's and from 60. He's, you know? uh, he's like a bad guy. He's, he's like some IT guy or whatever, and he controls these nanobots. And long story short, they inject people with these nanobots, and they take over a portion of the brain, and people can literally control the guy uh, like a video game. And... He explains how he, you know, it shows that they inject these little micro nanobots and they go through the system and they literally go into your brain and eat certain parts of your brain away and then replace that certain part of the brain. That's real. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, know. I, the, I was just. I know that was that a movie, but this stuff is real, right, Jules? Yeah, I mean, they you, can do you've that. talked about this with me off air. Yep. I mean, they they're using it now to target cancer and do all kinds of different things, but. Um, you know, they're teaching these things to become self-sufficient and to reproduce on their own. And that really should be a huge red flag. I mean, I've been following nanotechnology since its inception in the 80s. You know, I used to get Scientific American years ago, and that was the front page news in the 80s was nanotechnology and the promise of it. And I saw this coming back then. I mean, what happens when they then have a mind of their own and start reproducing and we don't know what that's going to do to our environment. What if, you know, these um, smart particles that HP is developing that have all of these sensors and they're all this nanotechnology, self-evolving type stuff, they're planning on spreading trillions of these across the planet. 
to use as quote unquote sensors. Think about it. You can carry them in on your shoes into your house. They're going to get on your hands when you touch something. All they have to do is do some aerial spraying and these smart sensors will be all over the planet and they could smart monitor. Dust. Yeah, smart, smart dust. dust. That's what it's called. And think about it. I mean, they could smell, you know, tobacco smoke on your fingers with these things. They're, these are microscopic nanoparticles. And they could track you via your GPS location. Maybe it's got Bluetooth in it to your phone. And then they can track you. I mean, I'm sure that there's many things they can do with them. It, this is frightening. This is like a science fiction movie that happened when we were all looking the other way. Well, e- even and worse we than that. financed it. <laughs> even worse than that. There's a movie I had it up on YouTube. And it got taken down for copyright. And then Facebook even took it off for copyright and gave me a warning and a flag and all sorts of crap. You know how they are. But uh, it, um, the, uh, the movie's called Remote Control War, and I suggest if you can find the movie, I suggest to go check it out. It's very disturbing. You should look up swarm technology. You know what that is, Jules? You ever hear of swarm technology? Uh, I do not believe so. All right. You know what a swarm is, a swarm of bees, a swarm of hornets, whatever. Right. Well, they're making these little robots that are the size of insects, little drones, like UAV drones. But they're the size of insects, and there will be 10,000 of them to fly in a swarm. And there is no one uh, leader, so that if you take the leader, you know, one out, you know, they all just go, oh, what do we do now? They operate as a hive mind. And they want to use them. They want to weaponize these things, give them artificial, complete artificial intelligence, and then give them the okay, the green light to kill humans at will. We'll get more into this when we come back, ladies and gentlemen. Look up swarm technology coming soon to the USSA. In the chat, ladies and gentlemen, I just put the link to the CBC for the movie. Uh, and if you're listening, obviously, you uh, over the internet and you're not near the chat, or if you're listening to the rebroadcast later on, or the archives on YouTube or on Oracle, uh, listen to me, Oracle, uh, on Orion, uh, you can go over and go to cbc.ca uh, backslash documentaries backslash doczone and then uh, just uh, look up uh, Remote Control War or Google Remote Control War. If you don't want to use Google, use whatever you want, you know, uh, whatever search engine. Just look up, all caps, Remote Control War, and it should bring it up. And that's the, that's the movie you're going to uh, hear with, uh, or excuse me, see rather, with uh, all the swarm technology and everything else. I'm not kidding. Right now, they, they admit that the, you know, the, there's a human in the in the chain of command, but eventually, the technology is going to become so uh, self aware that the human in the link is going to literally become the weak link, and they're going to want to make it more efficient. So they'll end up removing the human from the equation, and then the robot will be making the decision to kill. And now we're living in a Terminator movie. And I mean, I don't think anybody uh, who anybody that's ever seen a Terminator movie would be an advocate for you know giving robots AI and you know targeting ability and all this other stuff. I think they would understand the follies of that. Why these sick pricks are doing it? Because they don't. Well, they want to kill us, and they want to have you know. You can have a robot doesn't eat your food. Yeah, maybe it uses some energy, but if it pisses you off, you turn it off. Obviously, they're not really thinking of whether or not the robots would turn against them because they're so weak and uh, cowardly that they wouldn't be able to defend themselves from the robots because obviously, if they created an army of robots, you know that they would do in everybody, the cops, military, they would get rid of everybody. They wouldn't need them anymore. But then what would happen if the robots turned on them? Isn't that what happened in Battlestar Galactica? I honestly don't know. I never watched it. Is that what happened? That yeah, that's the- exactly what happened. They built the robots. The robots evolved, became very human-like, and then came back and blew up Earth. Oh, convenient. And it that's could happen. Could happen. That's just great. That's lovely. Like, we need... 
do we do any of us really need uh you know do we do we really need a robot slave well you know popeye robots can do things that humans can't yeah i know and i think we're really we're we're, we're tinkering with you know our own extinction here whether it's building skynet to take us out and ladies and gentlemen, you don't, you don't have to see all four of the Terminator movies. I think you only have to see one of the four to get an idea of why it's a bad idea. Uh, particularly number four, the last one. I know some people said it sucked, but if you want to see what a, a post-apocalyptic world filled with robots taking out human beings would look like, just go watch part four. It'll give you a good idea. Um, it's about transhumanism, Jules. A lot of this. Right. That's what that it is. is. It, and, you know, they have been working on trying to dump the human consciousness into digital format, too. I mean, they've been trying to do that for years, but I was just reading a few articles recently that, uh, you know, they're trying to digitize the essence of a person. And if they could do that, then think about it. These scumbags could become immortal. Well, that's, I think, what their ultimate goal is. I think their ultimate goal is to beat this physical body that our spiritual uh, forms, our soul, our essence is, it, it, you know, travels in our bodies. Anyway, with you know half an understanding of how things work, or you know, in reality, anyway, um, understands that your body, our bodies, are like a car, and our essence, our being, our person. Uh, you know, it's like the driver in the car, and you know, a car with a driver in it looks, sounds, and feels different than a car without a driver in it. That's why dead bodies look, you know, people always say, oh, they, they, they look totally different than they did when they were alive. Yeah, because their essence is gone. That's why it's just a, a lump of flesh that used to be, that, that, that used to house that energy. That's, that's all we are. So when you understand that, uh, you, you, or you, you have to understand that at a base level to be able to understand why these sick pricks do the things they do and what they're looking for. They want to, you know, beat time. Look, they were looking for the, uh, what was his name, Ponce de Leon, the one with the Fountain of Youth, right? Right. And they came down here looking for it in uh, Florida. You know, they, they want to survive. They, they want to, uh, you know, they want to live forever. They want to outlive the sheep. And they want to exterminate us any way that they can. Now, I'm not saying that just because they have a plan that, well, you know, Popeye, that wouldn't work because then they might kill themselves too and blah, blah. I know. I know. You don't have to sit there and, you know, blah, 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 blah. I understand. I get it. I completely concur. But these these morons, they don't think about that. To put it in perspective, more than half the people, the scientists involved with the Manhattan Project when they lit off the first atomic weapon, they thought that it was going to ignite all the oxygen in the atmosphere. Okay, they thought it was going to burn off all the oxygen, and they still did it. Yeah, so they they literally thought it was going to take out more than half of them. Thought it was going to take out all the oxygen on the planet, and yet they still did it. So what does that tell you, Jules? What does that tell you? The mindset of these sick bastards. Yeah, they're sick bastards. <laughs> they don't care. Unbelievable. They really don't care. And but, that's why but, they, they're creation a care ceremony. That's what that is. That's them getting rid of their, you know, if, if, they, if they do have any humanity left in them, that's how they get rid of it. You know, the question is, are these, I mean, I, let's go out on a limb here, but are they even human? I mean, I've read so many different things about reptilians and whatever. And I, I don't know. I mean, I believed that it was possible, but I never really saw any evidence for it. But I have to say... Some of the crazy stuff that I'm seeing going on now, like you'd mentioned it earlier, the complete inaction on Fukushima. What is that all about? Shouldn't we have every military force on the planet in there working on burying that thing? Or, I mean, at this point, there's nothing we can do, but shouldn't someone have been there six months ago? Eight months ago? Well, you know, you know maybe I mean, they're what, not. There was no maybe action. There, maybe, there are, maybe they are reptilians. Maybe Ike and all these other researchers and... These ancient or maybe they have no soul. Somebody says, I mean, something's well, wrong. You know, they, they could be. I mean, they could take so many forms. They could be what people call reptiles, or they could be, you know, as the the really heavily religious would say, possessed, or they don't have a soul. A lot of them, from the time they're children, are put through uh, mind control. 
a lot of these rich elites and their like their children, like the Bush kids and stuff, they do ritualistic abuse to them uh, to a make them, you know, sick, twisted individuals like their parents. Uh, but it helps for the parents to be able to control them and put them through certain rituals and everything else. It's ritual abuse. I mean, it really is, and it does happen. And these kids are raised a lot differently than we are. You know, they're raised at the ends justifies the means. But there's this entire global silence that's happening that, and you think, well, I don't know, I, as a Sweden, whole, I think I mean, that's the people. Sweden got shut down, Germany got shut down. I, I think uh, it's a lot just like they live. And somebody even talked yeah, about this in the chat be. before I, I yeah. saw. They mentioned they live. Uh, it's, it, it's it, you know, it could maybe it's something like that. You know where maybe they're really they're putting out a signal to keep everybody dumbed down, and they see some. They see what you know they want the people to see. You know what I mean? Concerning the attacks of September the 11th, it, they, I mean, there's so many people. Put your sunglasses on. See what the money says. See that money says this is your god. You know, look at the magazines. They'll tell you you know buy, consume. What I say is put your sunglasses on. And flip the aliens, the bird, whatever they are, aliens, the reptiles, the evil pricks, zest, ass hats, whatever they are. Give them two birds up the and tell them, F you, I'm not going to take it, and I'm mad as hell. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Interesting note from Delos1 in the chat room he said that uh kane is apparently connected to the franklin scandal and uh money from that whole endeavor uh, about 40 million of it went missing and apparently i guess he used it to buy the godfather's pizza chain i would uh, i'm gonna have to look into that and if anybody can uh if anybody can look into that and email me information if you can verify that for me that would be awesome Info at federaljack.com. Info at federaljack.com. You can email me about anything, actually. Uh, you know, questions, comments. You feel like telling me to go F myself, although you might get a, uh interesting email back. Actually, no, I'll probably just ignore you. Um, I don't have time for that crap. But seriously, if you have any uh, you know questions or any, you want to bring anything to my attention, feel free to email me. But if you guys can find out if um, you know more information about that or verify for that, that for me or uh, Delos, if you can send me that, that would be awesome because I, I would like to see. So, again, info at federaljack.com. Send me some uh, stuff to back it up and I'll, uh, I'll go on with that. So, thank you. Oh, look. Down with tyranny blog dot blogspot dot com. Does Herman Cain have 40 million? All right. So, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Go to down with tyranny dot blogspot dot com and check it out for yourself and see what's up. And I will check it out as well. And if, uh, if it if it looks like it's the real deal, it will go up on federaljack.com. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, Jules, what's with the brain implants that you were telling me about? What's this a uh, wireless brain implant crap? And then there was something you wanted to get into. Actually, you know what? We uh, we've talked about the wireless brain implant thing before, so uh -huh. we, we we'll hit that the second half of this segment. What's with the food? Because that's creepier. They don't have to tell you where it's coming from now. So, like, we could buy, like, food from China or whatever and think it's from somewhere else. That's the deal? Exactly. I mean, they're looking at um, trying to get rid of a lot of our food labeling. So, you know, they've been changing the names of things. So, like, high fructose corn syrup, they're now calling corn sugar. And uh, aspartame, they're now going to call amino sweet. So they're going to try to hide these things from us. But one of the things that I just saw the other day is that there's a big push from the food industry to um, have the USDA remove country of origin because they said that it's, un it's an unfair um, advantage that one country has over another now. Now, I'm sorry, but, you know, there's been no embargo or testing being done on the food coming out of Japan. And I just saw recently that there was a little loophole where they were sending tea through Canada and then the tea was getting sold as Canadian tea to the United States, but it was actually Japanese tea. So, I mean, think about it. Do you want to be eating food that was made in some Chinese factory next to a toxic waste dump, you know, or from Japan or from... How, you know, how about if they grew it right next door to Fukushima and they don't want to tell you? 
I mean, you like should be rings. able to tell because yeah, yeah because you could you, you should be able to tell because you could probably use it as a nightlight. But I mean, in all seriousness, seriously, like they have no like, idea like where all that rice. rice went to. Yeah, they don't know yeah, where it went. Yeah, to. I, they they don't know where it went to. Right? No, they don't know where it went to. Out, yeah, my ass. Where. They don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and I'm all the cars right I'm, now. That I, being- there's got to be a bill of lading somewhere, Jules. They're full of it. So so back when this all started. Um, Hillary Clinton met with their commerce minister in Japan, and they decided that Japanese the Japanese economy was one of the most important global com- economies there were. And so, remember, Hillary was going to tamp down on Internet rumors. And then Bill Clinton came out shortly thereafter and said that we should have a government agency that takes care of Internet rumors because it's damaging to all of us. And then after that, they shut off all the monitors here, and then Canada followed suit. Then they shut down all of the air... Um, the simulations showing where the radioactivity was going in the atmosphere and no one is testing anything. And now they want to get rid of country of origin. So <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. Well, you I mean, know, the I didn't only get thing into you can this. do is grow your own food. And I didn't get a chance to get into this with Judith yesterday, but uh, we talked about her, her cancer specialty mainly in, in cancer for about an hour and a half. And, what she knows that you can do to prevent it and and what you know how she worked with it and her thoughts on whether they used it to kill these world leaders and everything else and during the conversation and i didn't i don't remember i have to go back and listen to the interview because i have to you know uh put it together for air here and yes ladies and gentlemen i'm talking about judith ferry baker i was uh lucky enough to get another chance as you guys might have heard on the 22nd I was vexed because the CIA kept cutting off our uh, our interview, and uh, I was able to do an interview yesterday on Thanksgiving with Judith. So, and it was actually pretty eventful. We only got cut off once, so I guess they were too busy eating turkey. And we got another hour and a half interview with her, exclusive. And uh, you know, she pretty much started to dig in and go off on you know, from what she knows and everything about cancer and it's just incredible, incredible interview. So I'll have it up for you guys. But anyway, while we were talking, I was, th- and I don't remember if I, again, I'm have to go back and look up Jules, but, uh, it makes one wonder with what you know about the cancer being in the vaccines and how it reacted when they irradiated it and it made it worse. It makes you wonder if well, that is one of the reasons they're not even doing anything. This is about just the activation that they've been waiting because, for. Huh? Yeah, because you know this might be the trigger that turns it on. You know what I'm saying? A massive yeah, dose of radiation that would wake it up. Think about it. All of the pharmaceutical guys would get rich. Well, yeah, but not even that. But that massive culling that they want to do, mm-hmm. the kill off. But they take well, what all better the way? On the way down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Rape everybody until they're you know as they're dying, rape them for the last you know two cents that they can get out of the guys. Wow. And they'd get your property. They'd get everything. Kind you know, it's very wonder. possible. It's very possible. And I, I know that's stretching, but I thought about that. I mean, it was a logical thought that popped into my head during my conversation with her yesterday. Because I was like, you know, you know, she was talking how this cancer is sitting, you know, uh, and, and our bodies fight cancer off naturally all the time. But she was talking about how, you know, with the vaccine... Uh, this virus could be sitting there floating in your system. It's just waiting for the, you know, maybe if it's not active, it's waiting for the proper trigger. Maybe that's an age, you know, a certain age that you hit or, you know, your diet is horrible. And look at the diets of people now compared to the diets of people 30 years ago. You know, and then look at the cases of diabetes and cancer. And they say cancer, Judith says, you'll hear her. She says, it loves sugar. It loves yeah, it. I've read that. I've read that a lot. It loves um, that's why you should have your body crap. get your body into an alkaline state. The acidic state is the sugar state. An alkaline state. Um, yes. The, the cancer the, the cannot acidic, survive. The acid will wear you down. She even tells you she warns people about a good reason to. She drink a Coca Cola, take a uh, a calcium pill with it, because the just, phosphoric acid in the Coca Cola will eat bone away. I mean, this is what they're doing to us. How many of you drink Coca-Cola out there? You know, in the chat room, when you guys, you know, when you guys hear this, throw it up, in, you know, uh, in, in the chat. You know, if you know someone that drinks Coca-Cola a lot, 
How many? If you drink it a lot, tell me how many you drink. I'd love to see it. Because, I, you know, you better start taking calcium pills. Phosphoric acid, you, want it, you think I'm joking, I'm not. Take a hard-boiled egg, hard-boil it, right? And then take the egg and put it in a cup, a glass, and pour a can of Coke on it and let it sit and watch what happens. The phosphoric acid in there will eat the egg. There's videos of it on YouTube. I'm not kidding. It'll dissolve it. Think about yeah, what it does that... to your... Sorry. No, no, go on. I was just going to say, I remember as a kid, someone mentioning how it took rust off of a bumper. You know, you could dump Coca-Cola and use a toothbrush and take the rust off of a bumper with a... Which, that's true. You can. If it's a chrome bumper and it starts to get rusty on top of the chrome, you can polish it. That was an old trick that... We used to do back in the day if we didn't have any mothers, because mother's polish was kind of expensive. It's the best polish you can use for chrome. But if you didn't have any mothers around and you couldn't afford some, you get a bottle of Coca-Cola. And this is before they used the uh, uh, corn syrup. And they still had sugar in it. But, uh, I mean, you can still do it with the corn syrup ones, but the, the real sugar will end up, does end up working better. But uh, you can polish rust off Right off the chrome bumper. Harley Davidson? You need a rust spot? Put a little coke go on a rag and, and rub it off. Come right off. Phosphoric acid. Mmm, ladies and gentlemen. Pour it on asphalt. Let it sit there for a while and watch what happens. We're going to break. We'll bring it back. Brain chips, Jules. Brain chips. Um, well, in that article that I was looking at earlier about the 10 outlandish things uh, that they are looking at, there was one of them, number eight, was wire, wireless brain implants that can be remotely activated by law enforcement to make entire crowds of people passive. And it says that they can uh, remotely activate them through cell tower bursts or through use of handheld units issued to police and law enforcement to instantly pacify Large crowds of protesters or rioters. So they can use the cell phone towers. I don't know what type of technology they're using, but uh, sounds pretty interesting since cell towers pretty much permeate every corner of our country. Well, I mean, think about it. If everybody had RFID chips, right, and you all had or maybe even something smaller, but it had a receiving antenna on it. You just uh-huh. need to be putting out a signal for that antenna to pick up on. Yep. Well, you don't even think about it. If your cache was all electronic, I was thinking about this the other day, because you could embed you know, your electronic data, your medical records, uh, GPS tracking. You know, They could even put a cyanide uh, implant in there you know, to turn you off if they ever needed to. Um, but think about it. If all of your cash was electronic, they could always use that threat to make your account zero. You know, I, I, honestly, having everything go electronic and getting rid of money and getting rid of our, our paper records and our books. You know, you talk about books all the time. And that's, that's where history is, is in our books. So when things go electronic, history can be changed very easily. I they're just, doing that now. Charlotte is going to be warned about that. She said that they were going to take over, you know, completely with, you know, and change the way kids think by, you know, through the educational system and their change agents. And you've heard that aid, that term used before by these morons, you know, tr- trying to pretend it's a good thing. But she also warned that they would get rid of books and use computers to dumb the kids down. And we've talked. We talked about this on multiple shows. I was talking about this with Joe Joseph yesterday on his show. We did a special Thanksgiving uh, episode, and um, you know, it. They're dumbing these kids down. They're not teaching the kids cursive. No, I know it, that's insane. Kid, it, one of his kids told him he. They were like, "Yeah, we we didn't learn cursive," and he and he was like, "What?" And they were like, he, he he was like, yeah, they didn't teach us that. They just, you know, they teach them regular print. And he was like, what do you mean they don't teach you cursive? That was one of the first things we learned. 
Yeah, I think it was in third grade. The and Declaration cursive. of Independence and the Constitution are written in cursive. Right. right. How do you expect anybody to accurately be able to decipher and actually read what it says? Can you imagine if well, an entire generation of children exactly couldn't read cursive at all, couldn't understand right. what it said? And that is only to understand print words like uh, on a screen like that, you know, that kind of font. And then you show them the Declaration of Independence and you could show them a complete lie, you know, translation of it next to it in print. And people and they would think it, that's what it said. That's how they're going to take over, ladies and gentlemen, through the back effing door. Time to pull your kids out of public school and educate them yourselves. I firmly believe in homeschooling. Put the time and effort into effort into it because it's ridiculous. Well, I mean, just look at look at what we're discovering now. I mean, everything that we've ever learned was wrong. We were never told the truth about anything. You know, I mean, think about the history that you learned. I mean, we learned some basic facts, but take Thanksgiving as a perfect example. And you learned about the pilgrims and, oh, yeah, and the Indians helped us grow food. But you didn't learn about the smallpox. You didn't learn about the slaughters. You know, they didn't tell us what really happened. We didn't learn about that until much later. And that's probably for every historical occurrence that has happened. The only people who ever knew the true story are the people who actually lived it. And as those people die, the history dies. And I look at the time period that's happening right now. You know, 95% of everything that's going on right now is chronicled online. Is much of the stuff ever making it to print? All of our research and the things that, you know, we've all shared on the Internet, our YouTube videos and everything is electronic. I, you know, I, I'm sitting here listening to you t say that and I'm like, you know, wow. I mean, I know we have a lot of stuff written down, but all these websites, Jules is right. All these websites exist in cyberspace. Somebody listening, I know there's people that have some money. And I'm not talking about the middle class people. I know there's people that listen to the shows that have a decent amount of money. I'm not asking you to donate. But what I am asking you to do is uh, take a couple of, you know, one of your little servants or whatever and or hire somebody and make it his job to strictly print out copies of everything on the Internet in, for, in paper form. I mean, I know there's good people out there with money or maybe a collective group of people can do it. I mean, that would probably be more realistic. Maybe 20, 30 people could get together and start to literally archive, physically archive the uh, the important stuff on the Internet. I mean, not just in case of an EMP or, you know, something like that. But what happens if they just decide to you know say, nah, your website can't go up? And I, I know I've talked to hackers before. I, you, got, you guys have heard me say before, uh, you know, to the my constant listeners, just in case you're a new listener, I've had hackers on before. And I always ask them if they're going to build an alternative to the Internet. And they always say it's under construction stuff. And I know it would only take a couple of days for something else to pop up if they did take it down. But the point is, a lot of info would be lost. So, I put the call out there. 20, 30, 40 of you, get together. Let's create a, 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 a real group of people. It could be a worldwide group, a worldwide effort. It would also make, them, make it much harder for the New World Order to wipe out that history then, too, in physical form. So let's do that. Get as many people, maybe hundreds of people. Would be The more people, the easier, the faster it can get done, and the cheaper on each individual involved. Or just even chronicle your favorite sites or something, you know, print out print out some key stuff and put it somewhere. I'm just thinking that the day that we no longer have our electronic gadgets, and we're trying to rebuild things, there's going to have to be a way to pass down everything we've learned. You know, I, right now, I have a monster three-ring binder that is my survival guide. So anytime that I find, like, how-tos that will be very important after, you know, the fact, I print those out, and I three-hole punch, and I put them in, because someday I'll need to know that information. But, you know, as far as what's going on right now and are fighting, you know, these evil forces around the world that are trying to take us down as humanity, that isn't being written down anywhere. That's not going to end up in an Encyclopedia Britannica. 
And if someone doesn't, you know, document what has happened and who's contributed and whatever, that information will all be lost someday. That's all I'm thinking. Not if I have anything to say about it or do about it. That's why I tell people to buy books all the time. You know, I plug so many people's books on this show for free. And a lot of them don't know it. Some of them have been on my show. And when they, before they come on, when I talk to them off air and I, they find out I've been plugging their books for months, they're like, really? Thank you. You didn't have to do that. And I'm like, yes, I did, because it's not about the money, man. It's about getting that physical paper knowledge into people's hands so that if they, you know, with iPads and eBooks, you can change physical history. Jules, I mean, at least how it appears, you know, how, how, how kids are, are taught and how people learn it, you know. And Joel said it, you can, look, you could go in, look what they did to the Kindles a couple of years back, Amazon. They took Animal Farm in 1984 off of people's Kindles that had purchased it. And they were, of course, they refunded them their money. This was Amazon. But still, they said oh, out of nowhere, they said, oh, we didn't have the right to give, uh, to sell these books. Interesting that, uh, you know, those two books were the only ones that they didn't have the, uh, the rights to sell or Animal Farm in 1984. I suggest wow. if you haven't if you haven't read the books, go read them and you'll understand why, or at least go watch the movie, uh, 1984, and you'll get it. So, uh, uh, you know, you don't want that. You can they literally rip this stuff off of uh, the, uh, the the Kindles. You don't want to have that happen and not ha- you know be caught with your pants down. You'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Ladies and gentlemen, go get a friggin' bookshelf. Okay, don't be cheap. You want to you wanna invest in liberty? You want to invest in something? Invest in history. I'm not kidding. Go out to the store and print out stuff from websites. Go to Federal Jack, print everything I have out. I don't care. Go to any site, Intel Hub, Bob Tuscan, We Are Change, wherever. Anti-tyranny news. There's plenty of websites out there. Okay? And get other people involved. The more, the merrier. You know, somebody, do, you know, anybody that listens to this or hears this on Rebroad, Go make a Facebook page and make it a Facebook event. You know, let's call it like, you know, uh, Archive the Internet or something. You know, Operation Archive the Internet. There you go. The end of the show. Solutions, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing but solutions. So somebody go out there and I would. But I honestly, ladies and gentlemen, I don't have time between doing radio shows and everything else. I I just don't have time. So if you guys want to help me, that would be awesome. Somebody make a Facebook page, Operation Archive the Internet, send it all over the place and tell people to print out information and keep it archived and let's save truth and knowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Jules, thank you for coming on. I want to give a shout out to my buddy Bob Tusk and he's on the road right now. Thank you for coming on, Bob. Ladies and gentlemen, I love you all. I will see you on Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Till then, Semper Fi, I am out.